All right, you're all set. Thanks, Rob. Uh, welcome to the Amherst Design Review Board meeting of February 26, 2024. My name is Erica Vikas, and as the chair of the Amherst Design Review Board, I'm calling this meeting to order at 5.02 p.m. The meeting is being recorded and will be made available via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel in minutes are being taken. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended again by the Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. A hyperlink to the hearing will be posted on the town's online calendar. Board members, I'll take roll call, and when I say your name, let me know you're here, and we'll start with Catherine Porter. Present. And Lindsay Schnarr. Present. Karen Winter. Present. Uh, Pat Auth is not with us this evening, uh, and Eric Zikas. Present. Board members, if technical issues arise, we may need to pause temporarily to fix the problem and then continue the meeting. If the discussion needs to pause, it will be noted in the minutes. Please use the raise hand function and uh, to ask a question or make a comment. I'll see your request and call on you to speak. After speaking, remember to remute yourself. The general public comment period uh, item is reserved for public comment regarding, regarding items that are not on tonight's agenda. Please be aware that the board will not respond to comments during the general pu public comment period. Public comment could also be heard at other times during the meeting when deemed appropriate. Please indicate that you wish to make a comment by clicking the raise hand button when a public comment is solicited. If you've joined the Zoom meeting using a telephone, please indicate that you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your phone. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Residents can express their views for up to three minutes or at the discretion of the chair. If a speaker does not comply with these guidelines or exceeds their allotted time, their participation will be disconnected from the meeting. Tonight's agenda includes the following. So we have DRB FY 2024 number 12, uh, William Ravis to replace existing signage. Uh, number 13, Paul Tupa, Uptown Tap and Grill. Again, new signage. Um, 2024 item 14, Jason Yu from uh, 110 Tea House. And new signage. And 2024 15, Raquel Zelayandia, Taqueria del Pueblo, again, signage. Uh, 2024 16, Town of Amherst North Common has been uh, postponed to a future meeting. We'll then um, have uh, approval of January 29th meeting minutes, uh, general public comment period, which I propose to move up. Uh, on the agenda to before our reviews, if possible, and then other business. So quick poll about whether it's a, do I have approval to shift the general public comment period to before we do our reviews? Yes. Thanks. And then with regards to other business, if we have time and energy, who knows after a bunch of um, reviews, but if we have time and energy, we might have an initial conversation about uh, the possibility of the board revisiting the design review board standards. But we can address that when we get to it. Is there any other business to add to the agenda? That's it. Okay, great. So in that case, let's start with uh, item 12, if there's somebody here from um, William Ravis or Archer Signs. Well, Erica, um, did you want to oh, do- Oh, sorry, uh, general public comment yeah. period. Apologies, <laughs> yes, I was just cooking along, yeah. All right, so- Anybody from just, the public would like to join us. So if anybody in attendance in the public would wish to speak during a general public comment period, please indicate by either using the raise hand function or by pressing star nine if you called into the meeting today. I guess we'll give people a few minutes to muster up the courage. I'm seeing mostly applicants in the attendees, so I, I think they might want to wait to speak during their presentations. Sure. Uh, 
I would say, Erica, it's safe to to move on to the first agenda item um, okay. at this and point. If we, if we notice that um, additional members of the public have joined us throughout, I might we might then offer another opportunity to speak later on. Okay. Okay. Let's let's move on then. Uh, I'm twelve. All right. So, I believe in attendance we have Mr. Archer. So I'm going to promote him to panelist. Hello and welcome. Hi, how are there. you? Doing all right, thanks. Um, we're happy you're here. Um, if you wouldn't mind kind of walking us through your proposal. Uh, sure. That'd be great. And would you like to share your screen to show images or would you like me to do that on your behalf? Um, you, you do that. I'm not cool enough to know how to do that. So I'm gonna, uh, but I'll, I'll uh, if you wanna, sh you, yeah, if you wanna share the screen for, yeah, there we go. Yeah, and then you can um, tell me when to scroll or what have you. Well, we can start with the first uh, the first page there. That's that's perfect. Right. So the the building as it sits now has two existing signs: one here, one on the other side. There's two different elevations. We're replacing those signs with new signs. These signs have internally illuminated channel letters as the proposed. So only the letters illuminate at night um and the existing signs will be removed and and discarded so it's it's still a real estate office they're just uh this is the william ravis standard sign that we install for them is it, it, you know in most of their offices and um and then if you want to there's an existing freestanding sign that we're proposing to remove and replace as well so the existing one is sort of a cantilevered really a, a big cantilevered sign it's sort of odd because it's such a large cantilevered sign so we're replacing that with the, uh, the same square footage as a monument style sign so and this would also be internally illuminated but only the letters would illuminate at night all the blue that you see in all of these signs is opaque and does not light it's only the letters that mm -hmm. illuminate with internal illumination in in all cases uh, that's it. Okay. So the location of the second surface mounted sign is, uh, that sh it should be, there should be another page with that in there. Oh yeah. There we are. Yep. There we are. Okay. So and there's building... existing signs. There's existing signs there now. And this building is on the corner of uh, triangle and prey streets. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not terribly familiar with the area. I'm not sure of the intersection. <laughs> I, I believe it. you're, um, I believe you're correct, Erica. I think it's near um, Triangle Street on the other end of Prey Street, where it kind of meets. And I think the building's like on that corner. Let's see. Yeah, right there. Yep. Trying to drag the little guy. Whoop. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, we're close. Well, there we are. That looks like it, yeah. Oh. Back just one step, and you would see it perfectly. Just okay, so there's the, the freestanding sign. Yep, so the existing freestanding sign, and then, so one sign's on the door on prey, and one sign is on triangle? Uh, no, I think it's the flip side of the building. So if you go down... Uh, this the uh, not Triangle Street, but the side street there. You'll see one of them. Whoops, sorry. Yeah, turn. Okay, so one over the door on Prey yeah. Street. Yeah, if you if you zoom around, yeah, see, there's one there, mm -hmm. and then I, there's one on the flip side of the building. When you Face say the flip it. side, do you mean? Well, the, like the, it faces the parking lot on the opposite side. Okay. All right. So the two short yep. ends of the building. 
That's correct. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. I'll go mm -hmm. back to the PDF. Um, I have one concern, and that is with the size of the monument sign. Mm -hmm. um, Rob, I wonder if you can help us with the confirmation of this, but I thought that the code said uh, 25 square feet maximum for a freestanding sign in the BG. And this thing is huge. It's eight feet, eight inches by eight feet. I'm going to verify so, that really quickly. Yeah, thanks. Okay. And mm -hmm. maybe, so I, maybe we... I, I was thinking that the sign was just the blue portion of the sign, that the white portion is really just a stanchion to get it up off the ground. So I don't know if you're counting that as sign or not. Well, I am because it's painted opaque white. I think that if you propose mm -hmm. something on two legs, it might be different. Like if there was an open structure below, um, but I think the whole thing is reading as a as a solid surface. Well, we do have we do have a uh, um, I call it sign option two in their sign program that does have a double post sign. And um, although Rob doesn't have it, I, I went ahead today and just for giggles, I I put together a layout of that option. Um, Rob doesn't have it, but I can. I can show it. I, I wish I could share my screen. I probably I'd have to log on and well, I could maybe... take I could take a I could take a snapshot of it and try and share my screen if you wanted to see that. If okay. if if that's an issue, if the that may be helpful. Yeah. While Rob's looking that up, why don't I turn to the rest of the board members and ask for comments, um, perhaps on the package as a whole or other other questions? Mm -hmm. Sure. Anybody on the board members? Lindsay, go ahead. Um, yeah, I think that that's my primary comment concern. Um, yeah, I think that the sign is is legible and it's if it's consistent with the logo and other locations, then that makes sense. And I think it'll work well to have the illumination of the white lettering, um, but that white base, um, feels really heavy and um <clears throat> kind of a, kind of you know, just larger and more obstructing um than it needs to so i think if that could reduce down to just some posts or a post that would be great um my only other comment <clears throat> is about if there's an interest um in having any kind of subtext of what this business um, provides might be helpful so that people know, you know, what this business is if they're not familiar with the logo. They used to do that. Uh, they, they did away with the tagline um, years ago. Um, so they just use William Ravis and they rely on their marketing folks to make sure that digitally they're they're known mm -hmm. but they're they're a large enough outfit that most people do uh mm -hmm. at least in this neck of the woods william ravis is, is pretty significant um you know compared to colwell banker and you know some some pretty pretty large um they're comparative to other large real estate brokers i just i have never personally heard of them that doesn't mean never any heard of them. necessarily <laughs> but um yeah. It's just, you know, it's just a comment <clears throat> worth considering, perhaps. Sure. Who don't know it might improve their appeal. Catherine, I saw your hand, but I'm wondering if Rob has something to report back. Okay. If you don't mind, I'll let him pop in and then sure. shift to you. So I'll be quick. Um, so in the BG zoning district where this is located, um, they're allowed to have a maximum freestanding sign no higher than 10 feet off the ground. Mm -hmm. and maximum size of 25 square feet. So the only thing is the part where it says William Ravis um, can't be bigger than 25 square feet. But also it's tough because it seems the white part could technically be considered part of the structure. But when you think about it, it also kind of looks like it's part of the sign too. So it's really kind of like a weird gray area in terms of kind of establishing whether it's a structural part of the sign or whether you can consider it part of that 25 square feet. So I don't know. I don't know how board members feel 
about this particular design, but if you want him to redesign and to come back for further review, that's probably going to be required. But I would say, yes, 10 feet tall, 25 square feet for the actual sign itself. All right. Thanks for that. Thanks mm -hmm. for that, Rob. I appreciate that you took yep. the time to look that up for us. Um, Catherine and then Karen. Sure. Well, I, uh, I've driven by that uh, sign many times. Uh, I was totally shocked. I didn't know what happened to D.H. Jones, but if they, and I would agree with Lindsay, um, it might behoove the company to identify themselves, but uh, if they feel they have the, the uh, I don't know, what, what should I say? The people already know, uh, then that's up to them. I like the color. I thought it was very refreshing. Um, and even the sign they have there now seemed a little big and that's just the temporary sign. So I would certainly encourage a smaller sign because what we're seeing here looks, um, you know, it looks awkward. And uh, yeah, I'm so I'm pretty much agreeing with everything everybody else just said, but I do like the color. Uh, very, as I said, very refreshing from what we've seen before. Thanks, Catherine. Karen, go ahead. Um, I really have nothing to to add because I completely agree. I think that this white, uh, large white blank board there is really unappealing and kind of obtrusive um, compared to a the sign which is just hanging from the post. I think it is a lovely color. It's nice that it's so simple. And uh, it, it might be that this uh, is so well known, but it sounds like from the uh, from the design review board, none of us have heard of it. So I agree a little um, information I think would be welcome and would maybe make this a little bit more elegant. So, I, I would like to see a different design for this sign. Well, um, I don't think they're going to change their, their, they've got this logo at, at about 250 locations. I, I, um, I, 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 they would prefer not having a tagline if, if that would be okay. I, I understand what you're all, what you're all are saying, but I know that they're, they're trying to get away from the tagline. Um, so I don't, I don't think they're, they would prefer not to do that if that is all right. Yeah, but I, I do I think have. Our I do intention have it is not to change, not to ask them to change their logo if this is something that is appearing in multiple places. It's just some. Oh yeah, they've advice. got hundreds, yeah. hundreds of locations from Florida all the way to to um, uh, well, north north uh, into far into Massachusetts. So, I think. Um, I do have, as I mentioned before, I, I have a, um, if I can, sh if I share my screen, I took a, a, a photo of the drawing that I have in front of me and I can show that to you all. It's, they do have a secondary option that you all might like more. Okay. Thanks. Um, I, I don't, I'm going to try to do that. Um, <laughs> I, I apologize in advance because I still, I don't see any option. Oh, share. Wait a minute. Yeah. I don't know where uh, it is. Photo. Oh, photos. It says I can share a photo. Look at that. Okay. Wow. All right. Um, okay. Can everyone see that? Yep. It's sideways, but yeah. we can see it. <laughs> All right. Wait, let me, maybe I can, maybe I can, turn it. Uh, let's see. But I no, think but... we got the idea here and it's the same blue sign, but now... Mm -hmm. In lieu right, of the base is gone. It has it has a, a tiered post uh, on either side with a, a with a, a topper, you know, a fabricated header. It's really the same header as on that's on the monument, but the big white base is sort of gone, and there's a post on either side, and the, there's a a narrow post, and then there's a trim work, and then a wider post. It's attractive. I mean, we use this when this subject comes up. Um, this is this is sort of what we try to divert to as an option to make it feel lighter. I feel this is an improvement. <laughs> yeah, definitely an improvement. Uh, Lindsay, you have your hand. I can't quite see what is the overall height. 
eight feet. And what's the existing height? Do we know of the... Uh, to the top of the post is about 10 feet. Okay, so the white horizontal piece that of the existing is about eight feet, maybe nine feet. Uh, the vertical, the the uh, the the vertical post that's there is about is ten feet about, tall. The horizontal is probably that the oh, horizontal, feet. yeah, the horizontal is probably about eight feet. Maybe nine. uh, this this travels a little bit wide. We're a little shorter. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think my only com I think this is a vast improvement as well. Um, my only comment might be if if this is a location where there may be more than one business and there may be like another another sign um, panel below that we would just want to perhaps space the the area between the bottom of the the William Ravis sign and the um the band that goes around the posts that little detail yeah uh, low enough so that there's space for another sign i don't know if that's the intention or not like if, uh, if, there, yeah no there's plans. no there, i don't think so yeah there's no plans to have another sign there you if, if there we have had that scenario in the past but it's very few uh -huh. and we always will we, we design it that way from the beginning you know uh there's there's no plans to have another sign under that at any time that that i'm aware of um, not, it, I guess with that in mind, it still feels a little tall to me, but I'm curious what, like, maybe it could come down a bit. Um, it just feels pretty high off the ground, but I'm curious. What yeah, we, we, we were just trying to, to, to keep, you know, the existing one is even higher. So I was trying to maintain, hmm. you know, close to the, um, even lower actually than, than the horizontal post is now. Uh, yeah. but, be, but be, I understand what you mean because their logo is really, it's less square than Jones. So it's not, it's, it's lower to, um, it's, um, uh, uh, hold on one second. I'm, uh, I, I, I'm sorry. I sit on the ZBA, uh, in my town where I live and I'm getting a phone call from the chairman. Hang on, let me send it to voicemail. <laughs> okay. Do sorry about that. you think it could come down maybe like up to a foot depending on where that lands it and and maybe feel a little bit more in scale with this the negative space below i'm very happy to see the negative space below the opening but it feels like maybe it, it just has a little more height than it needs to my eye mm -hmm. that's all well we could we could um do that um uh, we could also bring the base post up taller which might help as well um, just to decrease some of the space in between the detail on the post and the bottom of the sign. Um, another foot, we're already two feet lower than what's there. Another foot might only be, I want to trying to get the lettering up as high as possible mm -hmm. uh, for visibility. There's cars on one okay. side. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's the true. reason that it is, but I, but I could bring the post up a little bit, um, you know, another foot or foot, I mean, uh, 10 inches or so to, to, move you know get rid of some of the space between the detail and the bottom of the sign or we could make the blue area of the sign larger but i think that it's uh two and a half by eight so what is that 16 uh for what is that 20 square mm -hmm. feet or so so we could make the blue a little taller as well what about just like a maybe a six inch i know i'm just like splitting hairs but like <laughs> we're splitting feet but um maybe like a six inch drop that i i think just some some increment that's maybe just gives a yeah, little. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I don't think six inches would matter. Um, I don't think six inches. Right. I think six inches would probably be okay. All right. Um, so we're the suggestion here is that this currently that dimension, Brian, is eight feet. Is that right? What I've just I've tried to annotate right. on the screen. Yep. And that that's exactly right. You're proposing that this detail might be moved up. So I think it kind of, I'm hearing Lindsay's, maybe the suggestion is kind of take the six inches out of. Yes. That, that Just zone. That's, height, yeah. Seven, yeah. Six, and yeah, forward. that's what I'm, that's what I'm getting to. So we would leave the details where they are in that case and just drop it six inches. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that, that yeah. starts to work. All right. Is this a, a yeah. legacy hand raise or a new one? Oh, legacy. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> It's a hard thing to remember. Um, 
Yeah, and I know that it's in a planter box as well in that, um, you know, during some of the time, some of that space underneath is going to be, I hope they'll maintain that um, and filled with plants. So, yeah, as far as I know, I mean, they do a pretty a really good job attractive, their... yeah. yeah, I think it's a really attractive sign. I think, you know, I second my colleagues here in appreciating the the color scheme. And I, I also think that the lighting only the the lettering um, on the on the building is a really nice feature. So. OK, great. Yeah. So, yeah, we can lower it six inches. I can make that note. Um, and then I just I do have a comment, though, the proposed square footage I'm, I'm showing on this drawing, I think it was a cut and paste error, but it says 11.11 .11 square feet. It's, it's actually um, 30 inches by eight feet. So what is that 20 square feet so i just it's just a i mean the, the dimensions are shown on the drawing but i just wanted yeah. to clear that up because i see the typo that's all appreciate that thank you okay. um drb members we didn't talk too much about or there weren't any specific recommendations for the the signage on the building itself i just want to make sure that nobody has any comments there um and if not maybe we could move forward with a um an official uh, recommendation. Um, Rob? So I just want to ask a clarifying question. So it seems that um, out of all three of the signs, the only recommendation the DRB has is to lower that top post above the detail by six inches, but leave the detail where it is on the posts. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, so was there anything else I might have missed besides that one recommendation? I think just um, choosing this version versus the over the first version that was presented. Okay, and then can I also ask uh, Brian, mm -hmm. um, one thing I recommend after uh, this meeting tonight when you get the chance, could you send me an updated rendering that shows that oh, new design? Yeah. And then with with the change mm -hmm. that we suggested here tonight of lowering that top part by six inches. And Absolutely. then um, yeah. once you send that to me, I could oh, send my you. document that I need to, to um, Jennifer Mullins, who would issue the sign permit. And then, you know, we, you'd be all set from there. Okay. Yeah. I'll send that to you tomorrow. I'll make those changes and I'll send you the updated rendering. And then you can just discard the, the one with the base mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah. I'm really glad cool. you had something handy. Um, well, I was I was thinking about it as you know as the day went on, and and I know that in smaller towns, I I, I just it's come up, but not every time. But and and I kind of felt like it was heavy as well. But the customer sort of drives me, some you know, and they tell me this is their number one; it's what they want. But uh, you know, I kind of agree with everyone, so that's why I put it together because I I, right. I felt these I felt the same way, but I have to ask, you know. Great. All right. So before you leave, um, could I entertain uh, board? Uh... I, I, had a, I had a question. Oh, uh, sorry. About the, uh, uh, I, I've noticed one or two uh, for sale signs around now with this company. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you remind us what they, because that's what we're going to start to see every place. Is it just simply uh, the sign that gives the company's name? I can't remember, did it say something like for sale? Um, what are those smaller signs that you put on people's yard? Do well, I don't know uh, because we don't provide those sign types for oh, William Ravis. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, they have, uh, well, you know what it is, is that those for sale signs, most realtors, they buy them for pennies online. And yeah. it's really not something local companies can compete with. So we just don't, get that business from any of our real uh, real estate uh, office customers. Um, so I, I couldn't tell you, I don't know what they use for those signs, unfortunately, but okay. um, you so know, I guess certainly. Have, yeah, I don't. So Rob, we don't as a board or as a town have anything to do with the for sale signs that relate to the company then. Is that what? No, uh, most okay. of the time, if those signs comply with the zoning bylaws, most of the time they don't even need a permit anyways. Okay. Like a for sale sign is kind of exempt from that. Yeah. This sign that we're approving tonight needs a sign permit because of its size and the fact that it's on commercial property. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll yeah. see them around town. I've noticed them already. Yeah. The blue ones, there is a blue and white sign, but 
And, and they're a pretty reasonable company. I mean, if there's something about what they're putting out that you're not crazy about, as, you know, you could always just stop in there and say, hey, listen, you know, do you mind? You know, they're pretty, pretty reasonable people. Yeah. Um, OK. You know, they, they, right. they want to be good neighbors. You know, sure. Cool. Okay. All right. So could I um, entertain a, a motion to approve with the recommendations that Rob just uh, reiterated for us? I move that we uh, uh, approve this uh, plan with the recommendations that we have discussed related to the uh, sign in the front of the building. <laughs> Rob, you, the rest. Second. Second. Thank you. Discussion. All right. All those in favor, mm -hmm. please say aye. aye. Raise your hand. That's unanimous. Thank you very much for your time tonight. No problem. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. You too. You too. Take care. Um, all right. Up next is uh, item 13, um, applicant Paul Tupa for 104 North Pleasant Street, um, which is the new Uptown Tap and Grill. All right, Mr. Tupa just got a panelist invite and we we'll just have to wait for him to accept it. Okay. Hi, Mr. Tupa, are you there? I am. I'm here. I think you can you hear me. We can hear you. We can't okay. see you, but we can hear you just fine. I was trying. I'm trying. All right. There you are. Hi. Welcome. You Glad you're here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'd love for you to kind of walk us through your proposal, and uh, you're welcome to share your screen, or I could do it on your behalf with the documents that you submitted. Yeah, if you could do it from there, that would be great. All right. I'm not so technically advanced as everybody else. Okay, so we've got um, your proposal application document and this image. Yes. Uh, okay. So we've so we've taken over uh, Amherst Burger Company um, with Barry Roberts' approval and everything. Uh, we're just basically doing identical signs with that have been up and have already been used. We're just changing the name and going black and white. So it's very basic to everything that was, that was already there or there that's there right now. So that's referring to the, the two uh, signs on the upper fascia of the building and some signage on the glass. Yeah. Yeah. Long time. And that, is that a vinyl? Vinyl. Yes. Uh -huh. All right. I don't know. I don't know if we'll keep that. We'll, depending on how much light and everything comes in, we'll see it. Because uh, they, we, some people have told us that it kind of blocks the lighting after we kind of went through it. So we're, we want to put it there so people can see us, but we'll see how how it goes. All right. The vinyl, just the final part. Just the vinyl. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Lindsay, <laughs> see your hand. Go ahead, please. Um, well, I'm excited to see that there's a new business coming into this space. Um, I hope it does well. Is the main entrance the door nearest the logo on the glass? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, because that has moved around in previous um own, or occupation of mm -hmm. that of that building. Um, so I think that you know I think that this pretty clearly marks that. Um. But it, that has been something that we've kind of addressed in the past is like how to, and it's a little bit of an awkward storefront, you know, because you've got those two doors. So yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know why we were talking, discussing it today. I'm like, where, why they would have it up top with a host stand and everything else. Just functionally, you don't want to walk into that space when the, the downstairs where that other, where we're using the main entrance, there's like a whole vestibule and everything there. So I didn't, we couldn't under understand that so yeah that will be the main entrance to the restaurant okay yeah i mean i think it's pretty clearly marked um 
but just as a word of warning, like if you have any kind of like open sign, I don't know, just making sure that you kind of mean lead people in that direction. Would the other door just be an egress only door? Egress only. Yep. Um, is there a handle on that currently? There is a handle on the outside. Yes. Um, so that could be worth considering um, removing the handle from the outside so that it doesn't mm -hmm. allow people to try to come in that way. That's just yep. a, a thought for practicality. Yep. Unless you need it for servers, but right. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah if we use I, the outdoor patio. I mean, I think that the white pops on the glass. Um, I guess one alternative could be um there have been a number of other locations that have done the inverse along that strip of having like the black background with the lighter lettering or white lettering um and given that there's kind of an off-white background of the fascia or the signage board behind um you know we have recommended in the past that the black on white gets inverted to a white on black that stretches, you know, you're just gonna paint the panel behind that like recessed panel. And then it just becomes kind of a, a black field with the white lettering, which also kind of keeps with the same color palette and, and pops with the contrast, but- Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Minimizes uh, I think, that kind of- Yeah, um, I think just the problem with that is because it's Miss Saigon and the barbershop, the mm -hmm. whole kind of strip is that one color that Barry has it painted. So it's, if we, painted just of our our section black behind it i think that would isn't it already it actually I, is already it because is. we've had a conversation is. with yeah the it is already black that's why i shifted to the google map here it's hard to see through yeah. the trees but um it is already oh, black oh so okay I, so i think with that so if you did the white on the black um mm -hmm. you know that's certainly with the black lettering that's that's one way like you have it shown. Defer. I think it yep. could also be interesting to look at yep. the inverse of just having the black signage kind of disappear into the black paint of the panel behind and let the white of the lettering pop from there. Um, and you could consider the same with the window um, logo where you have, rather than having a field of white with the black, you could just have white um or black with white kind of like outline just to kind of minimize the amount of obstruction of the signage on that glass mm -hmm. i'm less concerned about that um i think it is something to consider for the experience inside like if some if you have tables there it might be a little bit uncomfortable for someone to just have like a giant kind of like block in their view um paint so I think it's worth considering from the interior experience, depending on if you have seating there, but I'm more interested in maybe kind of like what, what you could do to um, create less of a like sign on that signage board and more of kind of just like the letters come out with the inversion. Those are my thoughts. Would anybody else care to share a, a comment? Yeah, if I have my hand here. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I. <laughs> uh, as I look at it now, it it looks so drab. But if you're saying that you can, we can confirm that the that the fascia is black. That makes it very much different in terms of the dynamics of the appeal to me of the sign. And I. It looks like there's no interest or attempt to add another color in there or do something to make it a pop a bit. But uh, if if the lettering could be uh, on a black fascia, then I I think it makes it uh, much more appealing. Right now, it looks and it looks sort of temporary. So maybe the and, news is good that there's black background. Maybe. And Catherine, may I ask you to clarify? Are you um, in favor of the what the black letters on a white background on a black mm -hmm. fascia? Or yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm in. Well, whatever you had originally proposed, I was. The black fascia to me is the key to. So just yeah. So yeah. just 
just swap, invert the color. So yeah, yes, black, exactly. Black, yeah. White, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I agree. And, and Karen? Yes, I agree too. I think that would make it a, a lot more elegant and still very visible. Um, I think it would be a vast improvement. I like that idea a lot. Yeah, I think you've got a unanimous um, support for that particular move. And I also appreciate Lindsay's suggestion about the, the window vinyl. Um, if you had the text in white, and then if you wanted to maintain the oval, if that's important part of your identity, that that could be a border rather than a field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that seems, it does seem valuable for the the sense of the the inside, right? Because that, that field doesn't look nearly as interesting from the back side of the window. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that, I mean, that's where the host location will be behind there. So if mm -hmm. people are looking in through the window, that gives them more visibility in. Oh, like I like I said before, like even if we, you know, if it doesn't work out, like I said, because of that light and everything else looking into, because some of these storefronts get so dark and you can't tell if places are open because of when it's so bright outside. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and then I, I also just wanted, and this is probably just a, a mock-up issue, like with the image here, but I do want to make sure that the, the sign. This sits within the the border pieces that kind of frame the fascia. There's mm -hmm. a, a slim line at the top and a slim line at the bottom. And this one yep. seems to be within those lines and this one's kind of spanning over it. Um, yep. They should both be the same and within the within that Inside. border. Yep, okay. Okay. Um, Catherine and Karen, your hands are up and I just wanna make sure that you have another comment or Thanks. Um, are there any additional comments for Mr. Tupa? Okay. Rob, would you mind? <laughs> you do such a nice job of summarizing our comments for us. Yeah, sure. So it seems like the board, I'm getting the impression that you're okay with moving forward, approving this one tonight, but you recommend to the applicant that they inverse the coloring on the signs. So do the white lettering on the black fascia for those two top signs. And then for that window sign, do like a, a white border, black backgrounds, but then uh, white lettering. So a pretty much inverse color on that. And those are the only two I really have. Yeah, I don't think I'd I'm missing clarify, anything. I think I'd clarify uh, with regards to the window vinyl, white border, no background. Oh, no background. Okay, yep. No so background. transparent background. Um, and then I do want to ask uh, Paul, so um, after this meeting tonight, when you can, um, would it be possible to possibly update the coloring on this mock-up or get like another mock-up to, to send to us before you get your sign permit? Yeah, uh, yeah, we can we can have them redo it. Okay, just because I do send uh, Jennifer Mullins um, the DRB's uh, approval and she needs yep. that in order to issue a sign permit. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and the, the face has already been painted black for you, so that part is... Yep. Snappy. That's probably the most expensive part right there, is painting the whole fascia. <laughs> yeah, they did a really nice job. So. All right, so then, um, motion to approve with recommendations. I move to approve with recommendations. I second. All right, great. All those in favor, please say aye. Hi. Hi. All right. Thank you very much. That's a unanimous vote. When are you planning to open? Thanks. Uh, we were shooting for Thursday, but it looks like probably Monday because we have a little uh, uh, all the problem. They're putting in a new pizza oven, so trying to figure oh, out wow. all that with the old building. Should yeah. be open very soon. That's exciting. We got Amherst Public House open already. So now this, you know, yeah. That's great. Well, congratulations on the new mm -hmm. business. Can't wait. Thanks. Best of luck. Thank you. All right.
All right. Thank you so much. Have a good night. You too. Two um, down. There we go. We're cooking. You guys are yep. great. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, the next one, uh, item 14, 110, 10 one tea house. So, uh, oh, there is. So Jason is attendance. Uh, I saw two Jasons, but the Jason who wants to be promoted raised their hands. Uh, Mr. Yu is going to be on to give their presentation. Fantastic. Hello? Hello, Mr. Yu. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Hi. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear yeah. you. Can you hear us? Okay. okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. So my... Yeah, Sorry, okay. uh, my name is Jason. Um, yeah, um, I'm the owner of the Taiwan Tea House. We do have seven locations near the Boston area. And then this location is previous VV Bubble Tea. It's actually my first bubble tea shop, which is a franchise. And then now I created my own brand. So I'm rebranding it to my own brand. So we are changing the existing sign and to my, uh, the new name, the new brand. Great, that's exciting. Are you, do you want to share your screen or should I share your documents on your behalf? Can you please share the documents? Sure. <clears throat> so uh, this is your application and then we have this uh, multi-page. So if you want to walk us through your proposal. Yeah, so the first, um, the first one is the big sign on the side of the building. Um, if you take on the second page, Ooh. yeah, here. So previously is the bookstore sign and then the VV bubble tea sign. Oops. Um, they are just got disconnected. Oh. oh, we still have you. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I see, okay. Um. So the landlord agreed to let me use the bookstores, like the space for the bookstore sign. And then to have like the big sign because pre before the VV sign is not very appearing. Like a lot of people don't know where we are. So, mm -hmm. and then he's giving us like the big space. So we are taking over the bookstore sign. So turn it to the, the, the long sign. Absolutely. Yeah. And then the second uh, next picture, if you can see, go to the next phase. Yeah. And then the blade sign is is uh, at the same location. And then it just changed to the uh, the Taiwan Tea House. And then the sign in the back. Is for like say the big, uh, VB one change to the squirrel one. Okay. Yeah. And these are lit. They're uh, illuminated. Yes. So signs. it's uh, internal illuminated. So only the letter it will illuminate. Um, okay. the black will be stay the black. Mm -hmm. Will the squirrel light up? That's adorable, by the way. Uh, yes. I, um, <laughs> let's. Yes, it will. Yeah. All right. So Erica, um, just from doing some quick research on the zoning bylaw again. Um, yep. So for any signs that are fixed to or suspended from a building, they can't be, so I guess the signs combined cannot exceed 10% of the area of the whole wall. And just from looking at those images, it seems like he's well within that 10%. I agree. Um, because that, that facade's pretty big. I believe it spans multiple floors. Yeah, I think they're in a Fine shape there. Thank you. For that fine shape. Job. Yep. No problem. And then also the 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 arrow with the hand pointing down. That's already on the building, right? Yeah, that was from. I think it's installed by the bookstore. I think yeah. the landlord is going to take it off because the bookstore already moved out. Okay, it fits your color scheme. Yeah. All right. Um, DRB members, if you have any uh, questions or comments for Mr. Yu, a minute here. Get Go ahead, Catherine. Up. Okay. Don't well, worry about the hand. <laughs> just remember to take it down. Um, just looking at the sign on the side of it's so visually, it's so much more attractive than those two signs that yeah. were, are there now. It's such an improvement. Uh, I could not have any word of criticism about it. And, uh, as, and I do notice that the squirrel doesn't, it's not there, but the squirrel appears as sort of a little extra on the other two signs. But to me, this has done Amherst a favor to have one really good looking sign there. So take my hand down. Thank you.
Karen or Lindsay? Go ahead, Karen. I totally agree. It's kind of amazing how, how when I let somebody else speak, they speak exactly my mind. It's very elegant. It's very visually uh, uh, noticeable, but um, very refined uh, and attractive. Congratulations. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Let's see. Yes. Um, yeah, I agree. This is a really nice, um, <clears throat> clean logo and sign. I love the blade sign over the door and the additional sign at the brick wall that we're looking at um, there. Um, my only question and concern is on the previous image over the window. So is this sign... Uh, is this there currently? Uh, the sign? Uh, yeah. No, we haven't changed the sign yet. Okay. Yeah, um, right now, currently, it's still a bookstore and then a VV bubble tea. Okay. So this can still, you have not purchased this yet. We, um, we I think the factory is like, have because we was going to um try to join the uh, design review board last month. But, and then somehow we got into this month. So I think they got my order last month because it takes a long time to make the sign for this kind of size. Okay. I mean, I think if it's already in fabrication, it's not It's not something that I would, I feel strongly enough that I think we need to adjust. But I am aware, and maybe this is just a Photoshop thing, but I think it wants to be the full length of that window opening. It looks like it's just shy of it by about six inches or eight inches on the oh. right side where Erica's cursor is. You see that? Okay. Yeah. So um, hopefully you measured the window opening and use that dimension. Um, that would be my recommendation. Um, my only other recommendation, other than I like the idea of adding the squirrel to the to the signage just because it's a nice picture, but my only other recommendation might be to, um, it feels like the, the space on the left and right side are, are pretty um, compressed compared to the space vertically. And so it might be nice to give a little more width of okay. black, on each side to balance out the amount of space you have um, top and bottom. Um, and I, I would even say it could be fun to have the, the big oval, that's probably even more expensive, but um, you know, if, if cost weren't a factor, that would be something that I thought could be kind of playful given that your other um, signs have that oval. But the, the main thing I would say is, is having the length reach um either be centered on the window if it's not the full length yeah or if it is the full length then that would be ideal and then if you do have um the option to give a little more space to to the sides that would be i think helpful to balance it out otherwise I okay. think. Okay. yes it's kind of two tiers of recommendations because Lindsay, i wrote down exactly the same thing that you said um Tier one, recommendation one is if it's not too late to change the order. Okay. Then, right, to make sure that the sign, the length of the sign matches the length of the window and to provide the additional black border um, on the ends. Sure. So a couple more inches on both sides. So if yeah. I, they can add it. Yeah. And okay. if it if it is too late, I think we all agree that this is a lovely sign, but please center it on the window. Oh, for sure. Yeah, of yeah. course. Okay. And then I didn't hear any comments outside of just general approval of the blade sign or the other, the squirrel sign, if we could call it that. Um, are there any other comments, DRB folks? No. All right, then, uh, third motion of the night. Um, Rob, do you, do, did you catch the, the recommendation? 
Yeah, so um, I guess, you know, if the sign's already been ordered, this is kind of like a um, recommendation that, you know, you might ignore mm -hmm. if the sign had already been ordered. But um, essentially to make, I guess, that space horizontally on the lettering more wide. And then the space up and down vertically above the lettering, below the lettering, more narrow. Um, and then the overarching tier two, uh, this should happen no matter what recommendation is to center the sign or to make the width of the sign itself match that of the window below it. Those are the two recommendations that I got. That go into the first category because if it's not yeah. already been fabricated. Lindsay, do you feel like what Rob said captured your your recommendation? It's close. <clears throat> I would just clarify um, that I think tier one, we'll say this, if the sign's already been ordered, let's just center it on the window. Yes. If the sign hasn't been ordered, make it the full length of the window opening and give a little more space left to right. I'm not as concerned about shrinking the vertical. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a possibility, but I'm more more concerned about the giving a little more width. So, um. Jason, did you already order the sign? Like it's it's in production and it's in the factory, as you'd mentioned. Yeah, like last month I already placed the order because it usually takes a um, long time to make. But I will call in mm -hmm. um to see if like the back the back one already be installed. So I wanna see like how how far they they are right now yeah. and see if we, if they can be changed. If they cannot be changed, I will tell them to centralize when they install it. Okay. Yeah. I would say, so that's the most important thing. You centralize the sign on the window or make sure that's the same length as the window below it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's, that's all I got, Erica. Okay. Super. So, um, board members, uh, a motion with recommendations as outlined by Rob. I move that we accept this, uh, proposal with the recommendations, uh, made by Rob. Thank you. A second. I second. Thank you, Karen. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Captain, uh, you want to Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you so much, night. Jason. It's, it's a lovely, it's a lovely sign package. We're excited. Yep. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye-bye. Okay. And okay. Next up is Raquel Zoliandia um, and Takaria Del Pueblo. So I see Raquel in attendance. I'm going to send them a panelist link. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, we can hear you just fine. Thanks. Hi. Thanks for being here. Um, Give me a second. Oh, I can't see you. There you are. Welcome, um, Ms. Elenia. We're happy to have you. Um, would you please introduce your project? And do you want me to share my screen for you? Or do you have the ability to share your screen? Um, can you share the pictures for me, please? Sure. Yeah. And I'll just. Um, yeah. So we have, we have your um, application document, and then I have two images. Yeah. Okay. So I um I had put the decal stickers. I did not know I needed permission to do the um logo. I put it because um a lot of people don't know it about us. We just started in November, and um things we did start very slow, and so. I thought maybe putting like a barcode would help people. So people have been scanning that. People also, when we started getting like um, delivery, didn't know where we were located. Um, they would um, get lost. And so if you see the other one, there's one that says under entrance. And that was very helpful for people to be like, oh, the door is at the other side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the neon side that um, I was told is the open sign. Um, just so people know we're open. Um, so, yep, and then the other side, I have a Mexican flag because a lot of people don't know where taqueria. Um, people don't know really, sometimes don't know what taqueria means, which is a taco place. And so that's also something we take very pride of, um, being a Mexican restaurant. So 
those are the two decal stickers I put it um, since we can't have the logo on our awning. And it's something that I just want people to visualize when they think of our taco spot, okay. the cactus, the taco. Um, and it's been helpful. Um, and sometimes people are afraid to enter. Um, and so the barcode has been very helpful. They just go outside and then they're like, they decide if they want to come in or not. Okay. Well, I would say that um, I don't think that the flag it's awesome, but I don't think it's within our scope because it's a temporary thing on the inside of the of the building. And it depends. We could we could provide some feedback on the QR code, but if it's a a temporary sheet of paper, yeah, it is just put up there. If you'd like to kind of maybe make it a vinyl sign on the window or want some design advice on the Yep. On okay, the yeah, that's design something. of that, we could provide it, but I don't, I don't think those fall within our scope if they're basically temporary signage elements. Yeah, they're just a piece of paper because um, we wanted to see if it was actually going to work out, and it's mm -hmm. actually re been really helpful. So, um, if I'm allowed, I can probably do a vinyl one and make it look more um, appealing on the window. Okay. And then you said the two, the two vinyls. Um, yep. Um, is it cactus? Yeah, it's a cactus. That's our um, logo. Yeah. And, yeah. And it says La Querida del Pueblo. And yeah. then that's the only one that says entrance that points to our door. All right. And the, the, the neon signs are already hanging in the space? Yep. It's okay. the open sign. Yeah. All right. Thanks for those clarifications. Yeah. Um, given that they're already in, uh, DRB members, can we start with the with the vinyls? Are there any comments? Is this something that we're happy to accept as is with no recommendations? I'm fine with it. Yeah. I like the cactus. It's very cute. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, with regards to the location of the, the neons, any comments? No, okay. And then um, let's have a conversation about the, about the QR codes, envisioning that they might become vinyl stickers on the windows. Right now they're temporary pieces of paper behind the glass, but if they become vinyl stickers on the windows and more permanent, what advice do we have? I have a thought about kind of scale and maybe making the, um, using the same font that you have for entrance um, to use the stand for menu, just to kind of like tone it down a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Karen, please. I also, um, I guess maybe you could put it down into the corner so that it's that your a nice cactus has takes center center space, but that um, you know it's big enough and they can it still will serve the purpose, but it's somehow uh, reduced and doesn't uh, sort of take center stage. Yeah, I can do that. I can make it um, go more in a corner so the logo is out there, but it's also accessible for people to just scan from outside. In the corner or on center would be a possibility. Catherine? Yeah, I would agree. Move it down to the corner. People will know what that is. I don't even know if you have to tell them scan. If you could just okay. have, the, if you could just have the code without all the white background, I think it would really, totally improve the appearance of your uh, windows. All right. Lindsay, you're thinking. I think that that all sounds good to me. Okay, great. 
Are there any last um, thoughts or comments before we make a motion to approve this proposal with recommendations? Rob. Um, does the board feel okay with it being the same color that it is now? So if it was a decal, you'd be fine with it being black, but has the same font as that entrance um, wording. So the, the, the word entrance for the sign above it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the, I guess the recommendations I wrote down, Erica, were um, pretty much the two I just said. So the using the same font for the word entrance on that decal above for the wording on the QR code sign. And then putting it on like a bottom corner and kind of make it a tiny bit smaller so it's out of the way of the, the window decal that you're trying to bring more attention to, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'd make the whole sign a square. Just kind of crop it yeah. so that it's clean. Okay. Okay. Noted. Thanks. Okay, so okay. then, um, are there any additional comments? Then a, a motion to approve recommendations. I move to approve with recommendations. Thank you. Second. I second. Thank you, Catherine. Um, comments. Great. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. That's it. That's all of us. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. You too. Have Thank a you. Nice you. Night. Oh, and okay. Great. Lovely. Um, so we uh, now have zero people in attendance, Erica. We scare them all away I'm after that last one. More public comment. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, we have to approve minutes. And I know you all read them in advance. Um, have to approve minutes and then we can decide if we have the energy to continue the conversation a little bit about um, just have an opening conversation about design guidelines. Shall I share my screen? This is a reminder, this was the January 29th meeting. We talked about uh, Aster and Pine font here. Although this is really their summary, here's our comments. We have no recommendations. Okay. And then we talked about um, South Pleasant Street uh, 4555 and then the proposal uh, by Tune Riddle, this is the summary of their proposal. And then here we have our discussion, which is lengthy. It was a, a long discussion. It was. it was hard to capture all of it into a brief a statements. Job, Thanks. I'm just going to scroll a little bit. Um, is, so the gray painted stone. Yeah, not painted. Uh, yeah, it's, um, it was more of a, a comment about the level of the canopy relating to the stone band at the front of the building mm -hmm. <clears throat> so i was i would just say um suggested adjusting the height of the canopy to align with the stone band at the front of the building something like that to align with the gray gray the stone. stone band mm -hmm. right so okay. at the front of the building yeah Okay. I also did suggest they consider painting the brick the same 
um, color as the front of the, the historic facade, the kind of light yellow that they that consider might be in here. I didn't see it. So what was the, um, sorry, which part of the building did you recommend having them paint to be um, the same so color as like the existing? A, yeah, there's like a reddish orange brick on the yeah. base of the addition. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, so you're talking about the side of the existing Hastings building that was kind of left unpainted. And you suggested... They're going to paint that yellow mm -hmm. to match the front. Yes. Um, I'm suggesting that they also paint the base of the addition that is currently shown in their renderings as like a reddish brick, brick color. Uh, here it is. Mm -hmm. Ex explore the idea of using a yellow brick on the new building. Oh, okay. Yep. All right, cool. <clears throat> Thanks. No problem. That's it. Okay. And that was it. That was it. So I have one recommendation uh, for, or one one edit to be made. Um, Catherine, do you, your hand is up. I just want to make sure that. Um, okay, great. So barring any other uh, changes to the January 29th meeting minutes, because I have a, a motion to approve with changes. Wait, Erica, didn't you say uh, an update or a recommendation? Nope. No? Okay, never mind. Sorry. Nope. I move to approve with recommendations. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Karen. Okay. Stop share. Do, do, do. That is it. I had 150 documents opened earlier, and now I have none. It's very exciting. <laughs> um, I thought a few of those. All right. So um, it's 6.14. I want to respect everyone's time, but I do think that um, if, if we have the energy for a 15-minute initial conversation about what some of the reasons for and goals for revisiting the design review board guidelines might be. So kind of an upper level conversation about whether this is something that the DRB would like to do um, and what we would achieve by doing it. Um, I will let you know that I've asked um, Paul Bockelman uh, to let us know whether or not we can have a working group might be called a subcommittee, um, mm -hmm. whether that would be a possibility so that we could have a couple members of the DRB and possibly members of the public join us as a kind of a smaller group outside of this and then bring a recommendation to the DRB. And then of course the DRB would have to make a recommendation to uh, the planning board, I would imagine, um, before anything was approved. So it's kind of a long arc. Um, Rob, you want to add something? Yeah, sure. I think Chris Brestra brought this up last time, but we actually got grant funding to do um, an overhaul uh, change of our design review criteria in the zoning bylaw, but also um, we're working with uh, Dotson and Flinker to create downtown design guidelines that are kind of larger um, and more carte blanche than what we have now. And that also might include update in the design review criteria as well for the DRB district. So I think one thing I definitely could do, Erica and the rest of the board members, I could discuss with our, um, so with Chris and our other planner, his name's Nate, who are more involved in that process than I am right now, if we can incorporate the DRB to be a part of those discussions, um, because they're going to start doing a lot of public outreach soon. Um, and I think having the DRB's feedback and input in all in most of those discussions and conversations would be really crucial. Um, I definitely would think that'd be an appropriate avenue to express our concerns in regards to the current design review criteria and how we can make improvements 
and also contribute to the overall design guidelines for the downtown as a whole anyways. So I think, you know, that could be an appropriate place to do it. Um, I don't know how fast they're moving with that yet. It's still kind of early on with them. Um, I think we have like two years to do the whole thing anyways, um, because the grant is funded for two years. So I, I definitely could reach out to, to the other folks in my department tomorrow and bring this up to them and just say the DRB definitely wants to be involved with those discussions. But I also am not opposed to having discussions within the DRB meetings that focus on our recommendations for a new design review criteria as well. So I think both conversations could be very useful in that process. So I don't know how the board members feel about that, given the fact that we're doing like this whole design guideline overhaul from a zoning and design perspective, in addition to updating our review criteria. Yeah, I think it's important to to coordinate there. And I know yeah. that Dodson and Flinker's charge is to incorporate a great deal of public and also various board and committee feedback in their um, in their process, it's a we've got a very public engaged approach to this project. Um, so we don't want to be redundant, but I think that we also have some interest and expertise to to bring to bear here. And uh, I don't know how detailed their design guidelines are going to be with regards to some of the things that we that we talk about. So. But I appreciate I, that, Rob, that you would kind of bring that to your the planning table, if you will, and maybe yeah. you could ask about process and timeline specifically. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it makes sense to also avoid having like two parallels of yeah. folks that are working on like kind of the same thing. Although the DRB's perspective, you're just focusing on the design review criteria, which is a part of the larger project that Dotson and Flinker is working on. But I think... Uh, combining both of those into the same process would probably be the most efficient way to 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 make the change happen. Um, so I guess I could definitely bring that up, but maybe at the next meeting, I could always report back to the board and and see like what's come up of those discussions and see what we can do moving forward. Um, and I don't know how much interaction Dotson and Flinger is going to have with the boards and committees. I know they're mostly going to be working with the planning board because they're the one that can recommend the zoning changes, but mm -hmm. I think they would also want design review criteria and feedback. They're going to want feedback from the historic commissions um, because we have three in town. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's what I could offer right now. Um, I don't know what else you want to discuss in addition to that, Erica, um, for this part of the meeting. Yeah, I think the, the other thing I would want to discuss would be kind of well, I'm remembering back to Lindsay, you raised it up and it's, you know, one of the, you commented on how I'm always saying, okay, now this is, there's a lot of redundancy here. Um, so I thought, you know, if we could just have a brief conversation about what the, our goals as a committee would be, is it, you know, we want to clarify, do we want to change um, what the kind of the vision for this kind of a, a, a process would be so that if we entered into it, we would have some um, the shared objectives. I'll just say, I mean, I think it's a great idea and I appreciate giving airspace to it. My brain is very fried right now, so I probably don't have a whole lot to offer, but just as a like, you know, aerial perspective on it, I think, um, perhaps the first goal could be to just like comb through the existing guidelines and see if there's any way to like consolidate or weed out redundancy as kind of the first step and then if there's I would say like the next round or the next priority from my perspective is like updating any language that feels like it's referencing um design priorities or, or guidelines that may be not reflective of the current design standards for downtown mm -hmm. in terms of referencing existing buildings and just make it more inclusive of design that is compatible versus consistent with. Mm -hmm. So one thing I could do, Erica, and the rest of the board, I could look at the existing criteria and see if I can start um, finding ways that we could condense it and to get rid of that redundancy. But then I could circulate that 
a week or two in advance so you guys can have the chance to review it as well. Or you could do your own research and see if you have any suggestions for what we could look at or something that we could add to the existing criteria. Because I know there are some things that I don't know if it was Lindsay or Erica thought was lacking um, that could be incorporated. And there are certain areas that could be combined because um, they're they're pretty much repetitive. Yeah. And I think, you know, making them all combined in some way that's efficient would make the most sense. Yeah, I think yeah. I'm referring to the materiality yeah. is the thing that seems to be missing. Go ahead, Catherine. Yeah, it's almost embarrassing when you start reading those uh, standards, I guess we're nine or 10, uh, because they are so redundant. I thought it was really a good idea to look at those. And uh, I think also to keep in mind that it's almost like we have two town town Amherst. We have the buildings around the common, and then we have the rest of the buildings that stretch out like the burger thing and everything else. And so, uh, you know, I would encourage some sensitivity to that piece because that is sort of the ground, the old Amherst. And sometimes uh, the frustration occurs when people see us or somebody tampering with the downtown. So happily, Hastings, for example, is a good example of that. It has been saved by Amherst College and it will be there and it it won't be a Levi store or something of that sort. So um, those, I mean, I think those are things that need to be sort of thought about when the when we do make some changes. Uh, but I, the redundancy is embarrassing. So enough of that. I think Catherine also one thing to in, to include uh, or to keep in mind is that you know they're not just looking at solely the buildings and maybe the areas near the buildings, but they're also looking at placemaking too and like how they can connect the downtown in a way that's more pedestrian friendly and, and more bicycle multimodal friendly and stuff like that. And they'll also look at, you know, how could you better utilize green spaces? How could you better utilize uh, underutilized spaces? I mean, stuff like that, that goes beyond sure. just the architecture, right. you know? That's right. Yeah. You're referring to Dodson and Flinker there. Yeah, yeah, yes. Dodson and Flinker, my bad. Because yeah. they, they, they also... Have, they also have a uh, landscape architects too that incorporate a lot of that placemaking stuff um, into public spaces and even space in front of these businesses. So that's something to keep in mind too. Karen. Um, Dotson and Flinker were hired to be the consultants of um, Milton, a, a kind of which did something very similar to what Amherst is doing now. And I don't know if the report on what they their final report is on the town webpage, but I started to read it and it's very helpful because it does give you an idea of uh, how all encompassing what they are dealing with is going to be. And I, I do think it would be really wonderful if um, the people that are so, that, that I've been so impressed with your expertise in formulating design recommendations that you become really involved in this because I think you have a lot to offer in this and it looks like they're reaching out and it, it's a great opportunity for uh, Amherst to move ahead and clarify where they're going. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, Rob, you've made um, a number of offers. <laughs> I know how busy you are, um, but do appreciate that you 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 offered to you know, um, return to uh, planning office and ask about what the timeline is and maybe understanding <laughs> what the Venn diagram is of our our scopes of interest. Um, and where the design review board will be uh, plugged in to the schedule, if you will. Um, and then you also offered to do an initial review to identify redundancies and then share that with the board mm -hmm. about a week in advance of our next meeting. Yeah. Um, and you guys could, you know, if you have time, I know you're all busy. Um, especially you, Lindsay and Eric, I know you're both very busy. Um, if you did have, you know, stuff you wanted to incorporate, I know Erica, you mentioned materiality. 
as one category to include. Mm -hmm. um, but if there's anything else you guys notice, I mean, it wouldn't hurt to, I guess, bring it up during the next meeting if we if we discuss this further. Great. Yeah, thank you. I, mm -hmm. I appreciate the offer. I think it sounds like there's some interest in that. Um, I, yeah, so kind of the, the two objectives I'm hearing are like redundancy and then just kind of like clarifying and also updating. Yes. Yes. Um, maybe the yeah well let's let's take a look at the next meeting um and take it from there so thanks Perfect. for getting us started that's great yep. okay folks we did it another successful meeting hey actually and before we end the meeting can i ask one question as yeah. um as a staff person to this board so i am actually running for a local election in the town that i live in i live in south hadley I am um, running unopposed for their planning board. And the only thing is, is that they meet on Mondays as well. Mm -hmm. So the Mondays they typically meet on are on the second and fourth Monday of every month. Okay. And I was wondering if it'd be okay with the DRB members, if we possibly start scheduling meetings for the third Monday or any other Monday besides those two. I mean, usually I know we like to keep them in the middle of the month or towards the end, but I thought, you know, I, I would ask and see if everybody was okay with that. And so if that was the case, the next meeting would be March 18th. That's fine with me. Cool. Spring break. Let me do a quick check. Oh, is that the week of spring break? It is. I didn't know that. Fine with me. Yep. Okay. Karen, Catherine? Uh, well, <clears throat> it's fine with me. Is Karen there? Oh, there, yeah. Is that okay with you, Karen? When does the planning um, board meet? The planning yeah. this meets on Wednesdays, but um, I, I'm planning to be somewhere else. I hope I can zoom in on that Monday. I, I'll be gone, but I'll try it. I think I think it'll be okay. I just need internet access where mm -hmm. I am. It is spring break, and so we're headed out. Awesome, great. Well, you know, and if if Pat can be here, then we'll have a quorum. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, yeah, I think I that it's. It's okay in principle. I appreciate you guys being accommodating. I know you love having me around, so you probably don't want to lose me as your staff person. Not at all. No, and congratulations <laughs> in advance, I guess. That's yeah, good luck with that. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's awesome. Um okay. And uh three new businesses coming to Amherst. Yeah. I went to um Botanica over the weekend. It's lovely. Really lovely. Great. Highly recommend it. Very nice in there. I think all those well. businesses are going to be just so exciting to have in town. I I Absolutely. bought pasta and wine at the <laughs> shop. <laughs> planning on buying lots of things from Botanica. <laughs> Me too. All right. Well, good night, everybody. Motion to adjourn. Have a good night. Approved. We go. <laughs> good night. Bye bye. <laughs> Bye. All right. Have a good night, all. Take Thank care. You.